house. It's a brand new day in Miami. First of all, it looks lovely. I have not even gotten out of this garage yet and I think it's gonna be so pretty. I am heading over to meet Alan for some matcha, for some avocado toast. I think we're going to this place called Novella in um, Oasis. Oasis is like this spot in Wynwood. They do like concerts, they have a lot of food vendors. It's very cute. So I'm heading there right now. Today's a structure day, so we're gonna be building, working on a lot of our client stuff. We're gonna spend about a good eight hours up there today, maybe a little bit less, we'll see. But I want to take y'all, the food at the spot is so good. Like, I think y'all are really gonna like it if you ever come and visit or if you live here and you haven't been to Paloma yet, you gotta come check it out. So yeah, let's head over that way. spot I needed to get a little bit of a roll I needed to get a little bit of a sweater because it's cold as hell in that coffee spot and I needed to get a battery for this camera because she died as soon as I got there like right after the matcha latte seriously Ooh. so I was just talking to Wilhelmina about like when you're a creative or you're an entrepreneur and you're building your shit up and you're working on your craft, sometimes when you connect with clientele, situations happen where you're forced to like grow. You're forced to develop your skills even faster and quicker than you were expecting. Like for instance, Wilhelmina had a client um, recently that, or actually just like today, that told him like, hey, um, I need you to create this music for my runway show, but I needed it turned in by today. He's only getting this information like yesterday. And like, what do you do with that? Like, so he busted his ass all day yesterday creating this runway sound which I love, it's so, so good, like so proud of him. The music, I was just like, ah, oh, he gets it. It was just so right. It was something I would want for my fashion show. And he made like four tracks and then an outro. And today, you know, he might have to forfeit the project because realistically, he might not be able to do it. It might not be realistic. And that's sometimes what we have to do as entrepreneurs, as creatives, is like look at what's the reality of the situation based off of the tools that you were given to succeed, you know, time frame, the, you know, all the little details. You have to do the best within your, the lines that were drawn for you. You know, the reality is he might have to forfeit it, but he's over here creating these soundtracks, these like runaway soundtracks in less than 24 hours. He created an EP, essentially an EP sampler within less than 24 hours. I was just telling the girls um, that like, I was talking about this whole lesson here and how it's like, it's, it's pondering on my mind how like, you created a, 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 a demo sampler, girl. I know, that's really good. You really could sell that to an artist and be like, this is the sound you can come with, it's cohesive, it's got a flow, and someone would be like, I'm gonna buy that. Go ahead and, and uh, build it out for yeah, me. Build you know what I mean? Build the full tracks build out for me. Damn. Yeah, it's like looking at your creative process, looking at what you're making, and then seeing how it can apply in other ways than it was built for. Yeah. Someone can draw the lines out for you and tell you to color within the lines, but based off of those lines, you might not be able to give the give. So it's like, well, what do I do with this? How can I, how else can I, can I give this to the world? And that's really what art is at the end of the day. You're just giving up your gifts and seeing what happens, see how people react to it. Some people might like it, some people might not. It's really none of your business, girl. Your only job you got to do is keep on creating, girl. And that's it. That's it. And that's on period. Period. So what's really good? <laughs> Choose.
Say hi. Hi, hi I'm Kim Kong. Introduce yourself. Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm Kim Kong. I just got a facial. Today we're talking business because... That's what it's been doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. Whatever it is, when people work with me, it's going to be fucking fun. I, you know what's so funny? I literally just told him today. We were sitting at the table and I got off the phone with you and I go, I think she's going to be a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, immediately. Yeah. I was like, that's the flavors I need. So. It is. Let's go to that back room over there. So I'm waiting for Stefano to pull up. We're gonna go do some axe throwing tonight. I'm very excited because I've only done this once and I would really like to do it again. So we're gonna go do it tonight. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what it's all about. For some reason, I feel like it can be really dangerous whenever people do this. Like, hasn't someone like cut their hand or like maybe sliced a finger or maybe they accidentally threw it at somebody? Like shit like that happens, I'm sure. Here he is. <laughs> Okay, so for the hat, I was thinking Trump's Make America Great Again, but without the the Make America Great Again, obviously. The white was tight because I felt like it kind of gave wife beater, but a little bit more gay and like... Oh, problematic. Yeah, y'all know where I'm going. Um, and then the jeans, they're blue and they're, I was going to cut them up, but then I was like, no, I was like, you know what? That would be too on brand. And then of course the boots, they're giving you country, but I figured with the white sock, it also makes it a little bit more lumberjack because I feel like they do that. And so I'm giving you like very much white America, very much let's go cut some trees in the woods while looking trendy. Real much. Yeah, I know a lot of people that would be so down. Yeah. 